Hello and welcome to Comedy Slab. I'm Adrian Lacey. I'm speaking to you from Kent in the southeast of England, the Garden of England indeed, and in the compost of England. No, sorry, in the Midlands of uh, England. Oh, I'm going to create so many enemies now. Um, we're more, my, the, we're more good... the privy, we're the outside toilet. You reckon? Mm. Right. I wasn't privy to that information. <laughs> but uh, anyway, in the Midlands, the English Midlands, is none other than Mr Shane O'Connor. Uh, do you realise your initials are, well, you probably do, having worked in radio, as have I, which is where we met, darling. Um, your initials, SOC, uh, mean something in radio, don't they? Do they? They do. Standard out cue. Maybe they uh, don't use it anymore. No, I didn't. I think no, I think you're going to say, but my initials, my middle initials, are DJ. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit freaky, oh, wow. isn't it? Really, a bit weird. That's very freaky. Yeah. Um, and you're wearing a dinner jacket, uh, so it's, it's all consistent, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Just a quick, so, a quick apology, sorry, before you go any further, just to say that I still. Uh, from last week's podcast, have the windows open. This has become a regular occurrence <laughs> in our house now. And uh, so if you hear any Zooming traffic, uh, although it is relatively late in the evening, they still like a Zoom when they can get it where around these parts. So uh, apologies. In fact, there's one just coming up the road now. So apologies for that. If you can hear. Yes. Oh, beautifully go. timed. There he goes. But, but being the cynic I am, I think you're adding it on afterwards. Sound effects. Uh, it's uh, BBC yeah. Sound Effects Composition CD. <laughs> ECD. Number 20, 27, yes. <laughs> Duration, 36 seconds, going from left to right. Yeah. I always prefer the album version of that. The singles were rubbish. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. true. Anyways. Never, never, never made the hit parade. Uh, but we digress, as the <laughs> wonderful it. Ronnie Corbett, with whom I've worked, hashtag name drop, um, used to say, Ronnie in the chair. So why is it the comedy slab? Well, the comedy bit, we are... Uh, Chewing over a, a different episode of a different comedy each week, or it can be, we haven't got round to the movies yet, but it's early days. Um, but anyway, one sort of comedic artefact, if you will. And then the slab is, well, we put it on the slab and uh, it's a bit like uh, the old joke. She was only a fishmonger's daughter, but uh, she's, she lay on the slab and said, fill it. No, we can't do that joke. Sorry, that was, that was a bad joke made even worse by my terrible I've telling never heard that thereof. One. I always, I, used, I, I always used to know, my dad always used to say she was only the woodworker's daughter, but she wasn't half a brazen bit. <laughs> I, I wondered if that was rhyming slang for a minute, but that's my f brain making you know, it even filthier. There's a play on the words, isn't it? Bra like a brazen bit is a, is like a, you know, a hand tool. Oh, God, it's getting worse, matron. It's get, it is getting worse, <laughs> but uh, you've also found my extremely weak spot, which is not only joke telling, but also DIY <laughs> and uh, anything practical. Uh, but while we're on this, the, the third one of the Trinity, she was only an optician's daughter, but two glasses and she made a spectacle of herself. <laughs> ba bum <laughs> Anyway, I should make clear, if that didn't make it, I think that made it clear, but we are not putting ourselves up as comedians, are we? Um, not with that material, we are, we're not. No. <laughs> no, we're not going out on the road with that. Uh, we are, in fact, dissecting comedy. So, actually, it, it's the, the pain... We inflict pain on other, on other comedic uh, artists, don't we? Which is a bit cruel, if you think about it. Well, I think we do it in quite a, quite a constructive way. I mean, that's, that's, that's our watchword, isn't it? We're not here to... Um, you know, to to sort of uh, um, just annihilate somebody's work. We appreciate somebody's work. We love comedy. I mean, that's what we want them mm. all to be winners. I mean, that's the whole point. But you know, we, you've got to be honest as well, haven't you? And if and if it's something, I always think as well. You, you can't like everything, can you? You know, no. You can't like everything, and I think that's the, you know, it's what things that you like. I won't, and things that I like, you won't, and that's yeah. that's the way of the world, isn't it? Really. So, well, well you like me, but I don't like you. Well, there's some good fine. example works, to kick it? off, isn't yeah. it? There you go. First off, there you go. I just, I just, how many S's in resignation? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the kind of hissing at the panto, isn't it? Anyway, uh, you, dear listener, um, and I don't mean that in a patronising way, as I was once told that sounds patronising, but actually, I mean it in a friendly way, because. Um, you're the only reason we do this. Did Otherwise, they, I've just got to talk to to, to Shane. What were we going to say? Sorry. Did, did they say to you? Did you know that sounds patronising? <laughs> hmm? Well, I said to them. <laughs> and what do we mean by patronising? <laughs> Um, which is why I had to um, find this one S in resignation since yeah. you asked. Yes. Yeah. 
But anyway, we do want to know your opinion of these things. You know, throw your opinions into the pot. Of course, they're every bit as valid as as uh, mine, and arguably more valid than Shane's. Mm. The way I'm feeling, um, but it, it could be uh, just the drink talking. You never know. Um, no, it's not. Any road up. Um, so what are we dissecting this week? Well, I've set Shane the task. This is how it works. Uh, we, we we lay into no, sorry, we evaluate uh, one piece of comedy each week be it an episode edition uh full length something or other which we'll get round to um and then uh, having done that at the end of the show uh one of us presents that uh show to the other uh to evaluate and then we swap it around so at the end of the, i'm not really explaining this at all no i think I? you're doing very well i think you're doing Do you we've think all so? done very well young mr Grace. yes <laughs> thank you have thank you uh, well, in which case, yeah, so we reverse roles, as it were. That sounds suspect. And at the end of the show, um, the the other person who isn't the first person. <laughs> you sure you're not reading the rules to to, uh, to Monopoly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on. And Sorry, the other person who hasn't got all the money. I think he... <laughs> but as more we straight to property. jail. <laughs> Do not pass podcast. <laughs> anyway, so we swapped it around and we set the next week's homework. I think that's what I, I yeah, meant. And, yeah. and you said, rearranged that into a well-known sentence. And you said, dear, dear Joan and Jerrica. I've never heard of the name Jerrica before. You said you really liked it in last week's podcast. I've never heard of that before. I didn't no, want to, but I didn't I want to think, admit my ignorance. Well, no, I, I, I didn't go on to admit mine, which is maybe it's made up for the show. And I noticed when I tried to Google it just now, yeah. uh, it comes up with dear Joan... And Jerrica, and then there's an, uh, another option. You know how Google yeah. gives you is trying to read your mind, which is mm. quite spooky. But someone's obviously misspelt it so many times. There's a Dear Joan and Jericho podcast that you can click on. Well, I thought on Google. I thought that's what you said when you when you when you first said that's what it's going to be. And I thought I thought it was like reason. a Jam in Jerusalem kind of thing or something like that. I didn't. I I had no idea anyway what you what we had in store. But um, no. give give people an idea what it's what what's it all about, Alfie. Yeah, what's it all about indeed? Well, um, Joan is played by Julia Davis. It's a very dark comedy, uh, I think it's fair to say. Um, I'll get your angle on it in a mo. But um, Jerrica, with an A on the end, is played by Vicky Pepperdine. And now I, forgive my ignorance, I, I admit to it each week actually, um, that I, I certainly don't claim to have seen every comedy going I do want to watch Getting On. Uh, <gasps> I've not that's seen one with it. Joe Brand, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's a complete, uh, unforgivable gap in my knowledge. Um, but it, I'm reading a review here, which is saying they're the minds behind Getting On. Um, did they write as well as appear in it? Do we know? Um, it was co-written Vicky Pepperdine and Joe Brand. They both worked in the NHS, didn't right. they? Yeah, I well, jo I saw Jo when she was still a nurse. That's how old I That's am. That's what she was a mental health nurse, wasn't she? she yeah, And yeah. she used to do um, stand-up as the sea monster. Uh, yes. Which which was a reference to a Doctor Who uh, baddie. I don't know if you knew that. Um, I didn't actually. The, the sea, and she used to wear like a kind of netting thing, and that's what the sea monsters used to wear when they used to walk out the sea and chase Doctor Who around and all over the place. But yeah, they they both they both worked in uh, well no, actually I think Vicky Pepperdine's mom worked in the NHS possibly or they might but I can't right. remember. But anyway, they both got connection with the NHS and that's why they co wrote again. It's a tough watch, you know. It's quite it's quite grim. Right. But it is funny if if you can imagine yeah. that that juxtaposition which is so difficult to pull off. Yeah. Anyway, so that's where you might know them previously from. Um Julia Davis I really loved in Nighty Night which was an Armando Iannucci uh, production, I believe. I haven't seen that for years. Um, Angus Deaton was in that as well. Did you see that? Oh, I loved it. I was, that was dark. That was uh, dark, black humor. Gorgeous. She was. She. Um, she. Uh, Julia Davis played this real narcissist, didn't she? She was just like a com completely oh, self-obsessed, <laughs> self-absorbed, uh, incredible. And, Re and Rebecca Front was kind of the foil for a lot of her narcissism. And was, oh, because she was trying to muscle in on the marriage. She or, was Angus Deaton's wife, wasn't she? Re yeah. Rebecca, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was just, um, but but some of the outtakes of that are funny. I don't know if you've ever seen. You can see that you catch up with those on YouTube. If you just put in ninety nine outtakes, they, oh god, I they, must do. Oh, god, they I mean, the hysterical. show's funny enough, so the outtakes must be funny. They had so much um, fun, I think. Yeah. 
Now, here's the thing. So mm. they are playing in this podcast, to bring it back to Dear Joan and Jerrica, with an A on the end, they are playing two agony aunts, and the conceit is that uh, the listeners write in. Uh, we were listening to episode one, so... Uh, of course, they have to hit the ground running, and it is as if they've been going for years, I, mm. one assumes, um, it, although it's never referred to. But it's as if, you know, there have been previous episodes and they're just picking up where they left off. Um, shall we hear a bit uh, sooner rather than later? Because I can talk for Britain, but uh, it, it will explain um, the, the, the setup by listening to... It's actually pretty much towards the top of the show, isn't it? Mm. Um, shame we're going to hear now. Um, and a, a little... Well, a little conversation between the two before they get underway with the, the, the agony that is to come. Although actually, to be honest, the agony starts right here as you'll hear. Well, good morning. Good morning. Jerrica, how good morning, are Joan. you? I'm very, very well indeed. Good, yes. good. Your hair looks stunning this morning. Thank you very much. Yes, the height I, you've got there. Yes, I came via Mark, um, who does a wonderful, wonderful job, and I said to him, can you put a bit of height in it mm-hmm. today? Is um, there something underneath that? Uh, yes, it's a, um, basically it's a big cotton wool clump, and what he's done is wrapped it round, uh, just something from... You never know. You don't know, no. I mean, if a sort of little white peeps coming through I'd think it was just your grey bits yes I mean, exactly you wouldn't, you. you wouldn't notice anyway but I mean it's an entire sort of big pack big bumper pack of, of cotton wool and he's wrapped the hair around he's done a wonderful and marvellous very mm. clever and will that stay for the week that will stay for a week to ten days now as I said to you I didn't really know what to expect with this Adrian when you when you sort of said right okay have a listen to this and so I didn't I didn't clock on to the fact straight away that it was that, that they were agony aunts um mm. And, which was fine. I mean, that's that's not a problem at all. The thing that, that struck me though was that was that Julia Davis talks with an accent, Scottish accent. Yeah, yeah and and Vicky Pepperdine doesn't. And and I read I read somewhere that somebody said I think it was on a message board. Somebody and it's, I don't know if it's just the strange thing that happened in people's heads when they listen to stuff like this. Somebody said that it was supposed to be loosely based on Lorraine Kelly and Claire Balding. Had well, you I had said, you heard I, that as well? No, I hadn't heard that, but I took the fact that my first instance was, and also we should say the music is um, very lively Scottish reels. Yeah, that was the only thing that threw me completely. Yeah, Yeah, all of that. Um, And uh, so, yes, I thought we were in the land of daytime TV at the beginning, and I did think Lorraine, as soon as I heard uh, uh, Julia Davis doing a very convincing Scottish accent, uh, not everyone can manage it. Um, Okay, I'm not Scottish, I'm a quarter Scot around the Wallet region. Um, that joke has l- served me so well for so many years. <laughs> By golly, I'm sticking to it. See, it's, it's quite good, um, though. I, 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 can, no, you might be able to help me, actually. I've just got a gardening question for you. Um, how do you get rid of thistles? I've got I've got a couple of thistles in the garden, and they're just evil. Have you, have you, ever, <laughs> have you ever tackled a thistle close up? Uh, no, how many S's in thistle? That's the other thing. <laughs> So, um, you think I'm joking? So, Honestly, seriously, these it really? grew, it like a monster thistle. Are, are we turning into gardening agony uncles now? Garden is, is your that gardening questions answered <laughs> on the comedy slab. That would be interesting, any, but any, I digress, and so do you. All right, if anybody knows how um, to tackle a thistle, please drop me a line. Okay, no, no, to answer your question, I wasn't sure how serious you were. I, I never know whether to indulge you or whether I'm I'm such a, 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 a just a, a bit part in your surreal comedy. No, no, it was when you when you were just saying that and I was just thinking about kilts and I thought <laughs> and I thought I was trying to chop this thistle down and I thought I wouldn't I want to do this in a kilt with no pants on. Do you know what I mean? Because Oof. Honestly, I've I got, don't want to picture that. I've got these riggers gloves on and I couldn't get near the blooming thing. But anyway, sorry, yeah, go on, I, I digress. So you the Scottish music at the start, which kind of threw yeah. me again. I was thinking, well, what am I listening to here? But they are two agony arts, aren't they, of course? Uh, they are. D- did you mean that people were... Oh, yeah, you said there was a Claire Balding reference. It didn't worry me. I mean, she was obviously just a posh... Um, uh, RP received pronunciation. Vicky Pepperdine's uh, character Jerrica was yeah. just a posh woman. Um, if she- I'm to summarise, I didn't get it first time at all. And uh, sorry, you were going to say something? No, I was just, just going to say mm. Vicky Pepperdine mm. always. And this again isn't a criticism because I love her. I, th- I think both of them they're brilliant, but she always is the same posh but all the things i've heard or seen her in she never mm. she never detracts from who's you know she's she's always that voice that look 
that person, whether it be, you know, Green Wing or anything else she's worked. Do you know what I mean? But right. somehow she seems to get away with it. I don't know. She obviously doesn't do accents, does she? Um, well, you say that, but I first came across her in um, Radio 4 comedy. We were talking about uh, Colin Holt last week. Yeah. Um, I think it was in the same slot, possibly, Wednesday nights. They tend to get ever so slightly edgier on Radio 4. And I thought she did a sketch show. This is going back yonks. And uh, who was her comedy partner? I'm going to have to research Vic, uh, that. Hudson. Um Pepperdine and Hudson, Hudson and Pepperdine, weren't they? Yeah, that sounds about right. Can't remember um, her first name. Oh, I thought it was Hudson River. No, confusing <laughs> geography with comedy. Yeah. Um, no, uh, she, uh, I think between them on that sketch show years ago, they they did a range of accents. So I, oh, I think maybe she's I'm, got maybe it I'm wrong. in her panoply, right? if I may use that term. But, she obviously um, didn't bring a panoply with her, did she? That was the, for this particular thing. It didn't pan thing. out, obviously. Yeah. No, yeah. but, well, that doesn't worry me. As long as it's... You know, as long as it's working in context, yeah. um, and there are plenty of actors of whom it is said, oh, he or she is just playing themselves or a version of themselves. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, not, not everyone's got vast range. As long as you've got one, one area that you do well, um, and the phone rings. Um, but first time through, and I've listened to it three times now. This podcast. Um, first time through, I. I just thought it it just sounded very sixth form and I and it turned me into a kind of almost a, 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 a naggy headmistress figure not even headmaster mm. no that sounds sexist anyway the um the point is I thought well it's 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 not funny and it's not it's not big and it's not clever you know we can all say sweary words and willy willy this and all of that and uh and it was only tonight on the third listen just before recording this I started to get it. Either that or my threshold of tolerance or something's gone gone down or gone AWOL. And I started to see that I I think uh, the first two listens, I was guilty of the very thing I accuse other people of when they don't get something and you think they're not getting what the focus of the gag is. There's a gag about, you know, Chris Morris, for instance, has gone really edgy, as we know, at various times, um, did a show about... Uh, uh, child abuse mm. but he was satir satirizing our neurotic reaction to child abuse he wasn't saying child abuse is funny or trivial um and so some of the problems that are, are raised and we are going to hear an, um, one of those in a mo um i just i turned around in my third list and i really don't know where i stand actually completely on it but i did find myself laughing laugh first feel guilty after so what did you make of it overall didn't exactly the same as you how weird i thought you would uh, be evangelical about this i don't know why but but I, how, <laughs> well because really, i suggested it yeah maybe maybe so maybe that was in the back of my mind but i felt exactly the same as you and i thought the difference between this and chris morris is that that the stuff that chris morris does is clever and, mm. and edgy. It's no good just being edgy for the sake of being edgy or edgy in its own right. I think you have to back mm. that up with something else, and it either has to be funny or it has to be clever. I mean, it's really difficult to do funny and edgy at the same time, but so maybe mm. clever and clever and edgy is a, a better combination. But, yeah, I thought I – thought, and it's interesting. When you look at the reviews of this, uh, and I don't know how it works on iTunes – Mm. Um, I wanted to see somebody who didn't like it. There were 25 people who reviewed it and given it three stars or less. But I couldn't actually find their reviews on iTunes because they'd been taken off or they weren't there. Or The only ones that were there were five-star reviews of people saying how fantastic this, this is. Interestingly enough, one of them was Sam Bain TV, which I'm presuming is, is Sam Bain, the guy who wrote um, uh, the... Um, uh, was it? Oh, what's it? I've forgotten it completely now. You've the dried, the, darling, the, the, Mich dried. the Mitchell and Webb Prompt. thing. What was the Mitchell and Webb? Uh, oh, that we Peep Mitchell Show. And Webb look when it went to oh Peep, Peep Show. Right. Peep Show. Yeah, who, who wrote uh, who wrote Peep Show? Um, but yeah, I couldn't find anybody who'd actually because I wanted to know what the twenty five people who had given it three stars or less what it was that they didn't like, but their reviews weren't there. Interestingly enough, but it's only. Um Apple stroke iTunes that can remove those reviews. It can't. It, you can't do it as a podcaster, can you? I, so if we get lousy reviews, we'll just have to live with them. I think you can. I think you can moderate your own your own can comment. You? I think you can. Yeah. I, I need to oh, don't don't correct me on that, but I think I think you can. Um, which was people kind of will think I've done that already with my solo podcast, which is which, <laughs> which is a bit of a worry, really. That you know, it's like that kind of 
uh, moderation that because the people who liked it and, and whenever I saw and I looked on various forums and stuff like that to see people who liked it, the people who liked it endlessly quoted um, the the rude bits from it, if you like, and it it, it struck right. it struck me as a kind of like behind the bike shed. So is it scripted? I couldn't figure out. I've looked and looked and looked and I can't find out. Do the, I get the sense that they're 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 off script? I mean, apart from the letters that they read out, they think that they're probably scripted, but their reactions, I'm, I'm guessing. I, well, my feeling was it could be scripted word for word because it, but um, otherwise they they might indeed be uh, ad libbing around what I call bullet points. You know where you want to go. Mm. Should we should we hear a clip of uh, yeah, one of the sure. letters and then uh, then the listener can decide whether they think it's scripted. Okay. So, right. uh, dear Joan and Jerrica, my husband and I seem to have reached an impasse in the bedroom and he suggested we try role play, but I just don't know where to begin. Mm. Celia, 62, from Truro. Oh, 60, sorry, I thought you meant that was her address. She, she is 62. She's 62. I see. Right. Mm, yes, it's a tricky one. Celia, did you say? Celia. Yes, 62 from Germany. Hello, hello, good morning, Celia. Hello. Oh, hello, hello. Yes, look, uh, it's, it's hard to know where to start, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, Not least with what role play. You know, it's, the first thing that springs to mind for me is, you know, police women or bus lady, lollipop yes, lady. French maid. Yes, I um, mean, French maid is sexier. She says in the long letter that her husband wants her to be... Um, playing someone quite accomplished, a pianist, uh, or mm, I'm not sure because she she mentioned lollipop lady, and I'm right. sort of thinking how is That's that? I mean, no insult to people like they're doing a valuable no, job, but it's a it's, it's sort of lonely old <clears throat> ladies who can stagger up mm. the road and hold her as long as they can hold the pole, sort mm. of mm. with no disrespect. No, we're kind of if you listen to this podcast now, you're up to date with me because that was the point where I realised it was an agony aunt situation. <laughs> Although, <laughs> I'm so slow on the uptake. Not that you're, yeah. Yeah, although, the interesting, and again, somebody else, I think I was reading a review, and somebody, somebody I think it was in The Guardian, um, they said that it was a, a spoof on local radio, which I hadn't... Oh, I'm looking at that review. What a load of nonsense. Oh, that's nowhere right, in local radio where you would get someone as posh okay. as, as Vicky... Pepperdine's character. Yeah, I mean, I I'm, think they've. Just, I think that's the Guardian just never listening to local radio, so they don't know what the hell it sounds like. Right. Although oh, this, I think they are all posh in local radio. I always thought I was the common one amongst all of them, but uh, uh, I, I just the, the whole the, the 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 format. You wouldn't, you know, they don't. They would never do agony aunts, would they? On uh, oh, it's uh, yeah, on local radio. But um, no. I, I tell you what, I felt, and this is what really shocked me, is I, I've, I am going with the belief, I think that it isn't scripted, it is, it is ad-libbed. Okay. That's, that's just going on that premise. Um, what really shocked me was I felt that, that Vicky Pepperdine, if it, if it was ad-libbed, really shined, re- really, I mean, she really can riff around stuff i mean she was i just yeah. thought i mean there was the there was the one and i'm doing i know i'm doing what a lot of the critics had done with this when she's talking about they start going on sidetrack and they're saying about the letter and they're saying about the woman and she said put a photo in with it and and, mm. and she's saying you know um she, she needs to drink more water she's looking very walnutty <laughs> and then and then they say, oh no it could be a skin condition um oh yeah she's got that agey nutty jaunty look uh, go, sorry, ga- AZ, gaunty, AZ, gaunty it, yeah. look, um, and it was just it was just that kind of like they kind of built on it, and then and then Vicky Pepperdine delivers like the coup de gras with it, and she says, and she's got a discharge from her nose. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did, I did finally laugh at that yeah. third time through. Yeah, I could understand. But I think why. that I think that's because they've corrupted me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was all sort of prim and folding my arms metaphorically the first time. Right? Well, I'm I'm better than this material. Yeah, I can look down my nose at it, and then it was, oh, lummy, it is actually quite a monstrous creation. That's that's fine. My worry was initially that they're looking down on. I mean, you know, it has a go at not to put too fine a point on it. Uh, fat people, people who don't look very nice, and for heaven's sake, we've got <laughs> we've got. Boys ejaculating in front of their mothers. And I thought that was. Do you know what? I thought that was too much, really. I, 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 I don't you know. Stop doing uh, it is now. child sexuality and incest a, a good a good base for for your comedy? I mean, particularly 
in your first episode you're thinking are you are you trying to shock is that is that why that's in there or how did that how did that all come and that was the point where i kind of really turned off to that i thought this just isn't funny now this is this is nasty yeah i don't know where i am with it but um it's almost like they they it does feel like they've corrupted me and do you think two uh, men had got away with that no i i I don't think they'd go anywhere near it, and, that, and that's where it's wrong, isn't it? That's that's where you know if you want if you want equity and parity, I think that's that's where you've got to say no. That is that is not the right kind of material. I, I don't know. It, I'm not sure if that's the right test to uh, hold it to. I mean, the thing is, there's uh, I was touching on it the the other week um, um, that there is so much despair behind comedies, as it were, under the bonnet. And the real point of that section, the middle letter, uh, which we're not going to hear from, because um, we haven't got time to hear from any, everything, but it might be also uh, uh, we haven't got the stomach for it. But the real point I felt was about a woman um, desperate, uh, certainly in middle age, to to be seen as attractive. And there is a line about, uh, you know, the... the Sons always find their mothers attractive, um, and the, you know, dot dot dot. Join the dots. Uh, therefore, a woman, uh, as Julia Davis's character Joan points out, well, at least you're always attractive to one person. Mm. I, I felt that was a sort of a, a, a critique core kind of thing. Right. If I don't sound too much like a Guardian reader, um, I did, that I, was behind it. I, I, like I say, for me, that it was like the behind the bike shed humor. It was way too medical, I, and, I, and I guess that's. That's kind of. I think at points, and maybe because I've seen her play this character so many times, she, uh, Vicky Pepperdine also said, almost sounded like a doctor in a way. You kind of think, oh, it was, it was, it was too medical. I think it's the kind of humour that you're programmed as a child to think is funny, and I think people, when they get to a certain age, find that comforting to go back to that <laughs> sniggering behind your hand, kind of. Oh, she said booby, kind of comedy, which I just. Like you say, I think I think you know you say you think oh I'm better than that you were saying, but I think we're all better than that. I think we all deserve better than that, and I think we can all do better than that. I think if it wasn't a podcast, I don't think I don't think you get a commission. I don't think you get away with it. I think it's almost it sounded to me like a demo for a for a radio show. You know what I mean? In a way, it sounded like it was demoing the material, demoing the characters. Um, and I still think that's where they're going with. It. I think they're they're trying to get a commission, and this is a new way of trying to get to get a commission, maybe for something. There is the precedent of the beef and dairy network, which we could study, put on the slab one week and dissect it. Have you heard of that? No. That started out as a podcast. It's a UK podcast, which has become a Radio Four commission. So um, that that route's already started. Uh, uh, hmm. um, should we hear another clip? Mm. And um, again, let the listener decide. Um, how amused or disgusted or maybe both at once they are. What's wrong with the fat guy? Absolutely. I mean, we've talked about this on the programme. Dab tums. Dab tums, moobs. We're, we're all about moobs. Um, we love getting hold of a big pound of manly flesh. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, Unless it's shielding a tiny penis, which sometimes will happen. That, that can. spills over and, and the literally. penis actually starts to retract into the, the fleshy pubis. Indeed. And uh, yes, that can be very, very difficult for both a man and a woman. What happens essentially is that you end up with what, what they call a... Uh, a, a, a verpunal pocket, um, which is essentially the flesh has grown round and then sealed over. So you will find that intercourse becomes increasingly difficult. And that alludes, that clip actually alludes back to what you were saying before, Adrian, about fat shaming and um, the way people look. And, and uh, you know, it's quite interesting that they've chosen to go down that route. What we didn't talk about, and I've just got to ask you quickly because I know it's your hobby horse, you haven't mentioned mm. audio quality. Ah, now, interesting one, yes. My first reaction was, oh, yes, we're we're in a room and we're hearing the sound of the room. Uh, I speak here as a uh, former sound engineer and sound's part of what I do, working in radio anyway, of course, and podcasting here. Um, and I'm very fussy. Um, I don't even meet my own standards half the time. Uh, and then I thought, when I heard the fridge kick in, uh, a bit later on, it is quite quiet, but you have to be listening out for like the sound nerd I am. I thought, isn't that the point that where they're satirising a podcast that is recorded in someone's kitchen? 
Um, and there are such things. And if they'd done it in the studio, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm being too kind to them. I'm, and I speak with a, a forked sorry, a forked tongue. <laughs> Uh, on the one hand, I want the lovely dry acoustic that only a studio can give with a yeah. nice stereo spread and all that yeah. stuff. Uh, on the other hand, I think they're trying to sound like a, quote, real podcast where someone's put uh, maybe not quite a, a dictaphone down on the kitchen table, but there are loads of podcasts in that category. And, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think they've done it in the studio and then added the fridge afterwards. I think they have recorded in probably one of their kitchens. Mm. Um I think, I mean, as I was saying earlier, I think The Guardian's completely missed the point with local radio. It's sending up uh, podcasting, but also sending up uh, agony aunts. I, I can't believe we're just on the same page with this because that's exactly what I thought mm. was was my heart sank when I heard the audio and I thought, oh, God, you know you know what I'm like. I've got no no tolerance for this at all. If it's not, mm. if it's not recorded properly, I don't really want to listen to it. Um, and, and Julia Davis was constantly off mic and I thought, oh, this is just awful. And then by the time it was over... I thought, slightly different to what you're thinking, but I thought they could probably claim, oh, yes, we did that on purpose. Mm. It, it was meant to be like that. But, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not convinced. Although they, they did, the production companies involved with this uh, is um, Julia Davis' uh, production company, which is uh, Hush Ho, isn't it, I think? Yeah, there are uh, three companies. Right? Yeah. Um, the other, Vicky Pepperdine Productions obviously speaks for itself, and a company called Dot Dot Dot, which is run by a guy called Joel Porter, who uh, specialises in podcast production. Um, in fact, he set the company up in 2016, I think. He's, he's been doing work with the TV channel Dave and stuff like that to do their uh, their podcast as well. So, mm, look it, who's done their homework. But it, but it was. No, I'm always fascinated by these, these the, like the, the credits and who's who and who's working on it and what they're doing and how they're doing it and all that sort of stuff, you know. That's, that, that's my kind of... Um, sort of uh, anaraki part of it i suppose really but i just thought it was mm. quite interesting that that's when i thought oh yeah he probably does sound like that on purpose because you know if he if he makes podcasts um and and produces them with that kind of quality he probably wouldn't be in business very long do you know what i mean so i think he's pro you're probably right there i think we're probably probably hit the nail on the head but um i'm amazed we're on mm. the same page with this one all the way except i'm i've sort of undergone a funny sort of conversion but i'm not even trusting the conversion i wonder if uh, if i i don't think i'll listen to it a fourth time but if i did i wonder if i'd flip back to the initial sort of tut tutting and you see i i mean i like uh, richard herry for instance he he says it's a phrase you'll hear a lot of comedians use but he, he says he he would rather punch up than punch down mm. and there's quite a bit of arguably punching down of uh, uh, by Joan and Jerrica, these, these uh, you know grotesque agony aunts. But again, uh, are they punching down because they're looking down at uh, obese people, or are they punching down because they they're trying to satirise? Uh, well, it's a, the sort of area of daytime TV, stroke podcast, stroke agony aunt kind of stuff. I, I'm not sure I've got an answer to that question. Just listening to episode one, I, maybe I'd have to listen to to more. Episodes. Mm, you've had a you've had a bit of a moment, as Del Boy was saying, the road to Domestos. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Kills all known podcasts. Yeah, dead. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's time. No, to, don't say it. To give it its stars now. We're, oh gosh, uh, stars out of five from each of us. Uh, I went uh, first last week, so as the coward oh, that I am, I think it's your turn. Well, am I allowed two ratings? One for the first listen and one for the third listen. Um. I think that's a cheating idea. I think I it's think you terrible, should. Isn't it? Well, you could average them out. I, okay, I'll, I can't believe I, you listened to it three times. I'm thinking I'm not doing enough work here. He's, well, it is a well, yeah, but you did your research on the Joel Porter. You know, you seem to know his entire CV back to school. Um, anyway, I'm going to go with. I am going to break our own rules, uh, which we're still forging in the in the white heat of technology. And um, uh, first, listen. No more than two stars. Third listen, four stars. Middle listen, three. So I'd say it's sort of average, averaging three. <laughs> How's that? That's rotten. <laughs> so you're giving it a three. Uh, I'm. I really didn't enjoy it at all. I'll be honest with you. And I and I'm really gutted because I love Julia Davis. I love Vicky Pepperdine. I think they are huge in their in their field. Both of them. I think they're they're fabulous and and on their game. They're excellent. Mm. I just, I just, I, I think unless you can can 
edit to within an inch of its life. I think doing doing riff stuff like that, if that's what they were doing, mm. um, is so difficult and so difficult to get right. And if they weren't doing improvisation, then the script wasn't for me at all. I'll give it a two. Okay, I um, thought you were going to go down that route. Yeah, yeah. which uh, which if I can add it up properly this week <laughs> gives <laughs> gives a total of seven out of ten. No, <laughs> hang on. Uh, what I, in no, which base? It's uh, yeah to, to the base. Hang on a second. Let me just work this out. No, it's uh, it's a five out of ten. So halfway there. I'll give I suppose. it five. Yeah, it's between not, us. Yeah, not, not bad. I suppose is it really not bad? Uh, that's all we have got time for on this particular episode. If you've enjoyed. Uh, can you do the usual things and pass it on and like it and all the rest of it? Uh, what mm. else do we need to tell people? We're on Twitter, at Comedy Slab, we strangely sure enough. Yeah. And also, we'd be interested in your star rating. You could just find the asterisk button on your smarty pants phone and uh, you could put it in a tweet, what you make of... Well, you, could, you can, of course, critique our podcast, but I'm thinking also of the Dear Joan and Jerrica, first and foremost. Um, but yes, if you want to say nice things about us and give us a much more generous star rating than we're, this is the danger, you see, isn't it, of us, uh, as it were, exposing ourselves, <laughs> more um, matron, matron. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and you know, uh, you know, those who uh, live by the sword might die by the sword or die by the star rating on Apple Podcasts. So, um, uh, do, you know, do you know? I think in this in this PC world that we live in now, and you know, well, safe, where they sell computers, PC so, world, so PC world, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we sponsored? I'm not living in PC. Well, I'm living in Dixon's, mate. What's the matter with you? Um, I uh, I think one of the in you know, the safe space and all the rest of it. I think one of the things that we are sadly failing to to continue to be able to do is to critique things in a kind way. Mm. I mean, that to me, that's our watchword. That's what we do. Is we try and we try and we try and be honest. We try and critique. We try and do it in a helpful and a constructive way. Um, and never to try and destroy the people or for all the wrong reasons. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. And if, one, if people want to do that with this podcast, more than happy because, you know, we don't have all the ideas, do we? And if somebody says, hey, do you know what? It'd be, it's all right, but if you did this... If you both mm. took your tops off, it might be better, you know, <laughs> stuff like I, that. I don't know about you, mine's already off. Oh, it's, a, it's a warm <laughs> evening. <laughs> I, 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 Too I, I, much I, information. Oil being rubbed on somewhere down there. Oh. I didn't, I didn't know was. <laughs> anyway, it's time for me to pick one for next week, isn't it, then, now? Oh, gosh, yes, set the homework, master. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do then. Shall we go back across the Atlantic? At, All right. And uh, shall we pick up one that is uh, is one of my recent favourites from the United States mm. and uh, particularly pertinent in this um, uh, this new technologically advanced world that we now live in? It's I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Silicon Valley. Uh, I've heard of the play, so I don't think I've heard of the comedy. No. Okay, it's uh, and it basically it does what it says in the tin. It's 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 set in California and it's set around the tech industry. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, that's going to be dry as a bone. It's one of my favourites um, for the last few years. I've, I've been following it very closely, and it's it's fabulous. So um, we'll uh, we'll we'll dig that one out. We'll have a we'll have a watch of an episode of Silicon Valley for uh, for next time round. Um, you, you can let people know where they can get the pod. This is a good one. The podcast is free. Uh, the one we've been critiquing this week, isn't it? It's uh, yeah. So just uh, search "Dear Joan and Jerrica." Although Mr. Google will kind or Ms. Google will kindly offer you <laughs> Joan <and> Jericho <laughs> yeah. if you want. Yeah. Uh, either way, you end up at the same point. I think um, available on all good uh, podcatchers because Joel knows what he's doing. Um, and uh, and we now know what Joel's doing, yeah. uh, thanks to Shane's very, very uh, thorough re- research. Um, so that's about it, isn't it, really? Yeah, that's it for, 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 for another week. And uh, if you can join us next week, don't forget, you can listen to the back episodes on Spreaker as well, uh, although there aren't that many. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yet, But yet. surprisingly, every week, there's another one added to the list. So uh, we'll yeah. keep doing that if you keep listening. Thanks for being with us. I've been Shane O'Connor. And I have every expectation I will continue to be Adrian Lacey. Goodbye from both of us. <laughs>